Jacob heard that Laban's kids were not very happy with him. Jacob told his cousin wives his plan to head home since their father, his uncle, is not as friendly as he used to be. Jacob goes on about a dream he had and how the angel of the Lord spoke to him. Meanwhile, Rachel stole all of her dad's household gods. Rachel was sitting on her camel and had hidden the action figure god collector set in her saddlebag. She basically told dear old dad that she can't get up off the camel because she is having her monthly period. I have the memories of every church I ever attended in my mind as a long procession of white walls, wooden pulpits, choirs, the smell of old ladies' perfume, and home-baked goods and cheap coffee after the service. Then, of course, there's Sunday school, which I loved. Everyone dressed and pressed in their Sunday best, Bible tucked under their arm, ready to serve God. I loved wearing my Sunday school clothes and combing my hair for service. I had a good Christian friend say this to me, and then after saying it, said, love you. And um, all I can say to that is, number one, if that's the case, why aren't there tons of atheists out there eating babies and killing old people? Um, I'm certainly not doing it. And secondly, how many Christian people do you know are walking a straight and arrow and just not sinning? I was in the church for 20 years, and I can tell you that that is not the case. Human understanding of God's will is precisely what believers use to establish His goodness in the first place. So if ex-convicts will do what God will not, then how can God's goodness ever truly be established? And if Christians are willing to believe that their God is within His right to let tragedies occur, like the one in Cleveland, then the only conclusion I can come to is that, in some circumstances, kidnapping and rape are acceptable to God. If that is His idea of goodness, I don't want any part of it. The Christianity Monument would have been so awesome. It was a statue of Jesus riding a unicorn while fighting Satan, who happened to look a lot like Richard Dawson. The, the, the old host from Family Feud? No, the scientist. Richard Dawkins? That's what I said. Anyway, the statue would be in full color, stand 30 stories tall, and Jesus' flaming sword would have real flames coming out of it. Science owes a debt. Hmm, seems that even the geologically confused Yabba Dabba Doo merchants have jumped on the anti-naturalist bandwagon. In case you don't recognise this chap, his name is Karl Barr, or to give him his formal academic title, Karl Barr. Therefore, from line 1 and 4, it follows that substance dualism is false. Hello, I'm Bob Smearfack, but not really. We're rolling into Jerusalem. Your boy's gonna get thrown under the bus to the big religious hoo-haws. Then they're gonna hand him off to the Romans who are gonna beat the shit out of him and then hoist him up so he has a really nice view of the city, if you know what I mean. And then on day three, he was gonna do a full frontal resurrection. This is your Bible on psychotherapy. This audio-activated lighting system predated the Clapper by 6,000 years. He is the most interesting creationist in the world. Stay faithful, my friends. Those hues of heavenly white light, which now seem to have clouded my eyes for so long, slowly gave way to the brilliant colors of everything that surrounded me. And there was order in those colors. There was sense in those colors. There was wonder in those colors. I noticed that many times along this path of my life, The 
the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, to remove the censers from the charred remains and scatter the coals some distance away, for the censers are holy. <laughs> do I have to do I have to get near the charred remains like that much? Some of them were holding on to it. There's there's burn hands on the poles. Well, I don't know, just kinda kick it, it'll probably crumble. Kick it? Yeah, kick it and it'll, the hand will I don't will wanna crumble. get I don't wanna get people in my eyes. That's just, gross to me. I don't know. Don't do you worry. have a thing I can wear over my face? I don't want the people dust in my mouth. Drama Queen! You show the skeptics that you're right. You don't just accuse them of being closed-minded or conspiring to keep your discovery from becoming common knowledge. This is how science works. You have to be willing to demonstrate that you're right. And science as I've said before, doesn't make exceptions. No, not even for dishonest people. Whilst geocentrists might like to claim that their universe is true, of course it isn't. And that's why real rocket science has run the gamut from providing the most accurate landing yet seen, to providing invaluable insights to the workings of the universe, to accidentally drawing a gentleman's sausage on Mars. The irony is that we've been able to do all these things and draw bollocks on the red planet in no small part because geocentrism is bollocks. Now phosphates are essential for crop growth. Bone meal is a good source of phosphates, but the slaughterhouses could not keep up with demand. Bones were imported from the great battlefields of Europe. Mummified Egyptian cats were used, and it was not just mummified cats being added to the soil. While the British populace were re-ingesting horses, soldiers, mummies and their cats, it was discovered that coprolites, dinosaur crap, was an excellent source of phosphates, and there was a mini mining boom to dig up the crap from where Noah buried the dinosaurs and add that to the British diet. remaining reason for these Christians to be so morally vocal and imposing is to keep people from going to hell. But many of these morally vocal Christians do not have an air of concern when they tell people that homosexuality is wrong, or when they tell people not to blaspheme. I guess I'm kind of turning the question around, which is, what would it take for you to not believe? How far are you willing to run with this answer of, well, God's mysterious? Why is it, Ray, that every avenue of biological categorization consistently points to evolution from a common ancestor? When I asked you at Hollywood High School why the morphology, chronological order, and DNA of organisms cross-confirm each other and form the same hierarchies that Darwin had envisioned, this was your answer. It's because God made them like that. Do we still have to do this? Do we really still have to show that evolution is science and creationism is not? Alright, fine, let's get through this. And the ontological argument is one of my favorite arguments in favor of God's existence because it's so exquisitely stupid. Really? You believe the idea that a man rose from the dead is the best explanation for something? And that is in no way rational. Testable, falsifiable, science fucking tific <laughs> My science classes were really scary. The science teacher told us that we have to make sure that we love and pray to Charles Darwin every single day and never slip because at any point he could come back on the wings of a flaming monkey and he would take all the obedient believing evolutionists and evolve them into a perfect galactic superculture for all eternity. But all the bad people would be in torment for a thousand years, devolved into monkeys throwing feces at each other, and after that they would devolve into worms forever. That's why I've always made sure to be a good evolutionist and love and adore the messiah Charles Darwin. 